gentlemen and ladies. Y'all know my boy, right? That's Jethro. And Jethro, he's got a little something he want to tell y'all. Now, he's going to be in my background. And you guys, I want you to understand, I got control of the audio. I got control of the visual. The horizontal and the vertical. The haziness and the craziness. So don't get offended. Just want y'all to understand. That's why we turn the volume down here. I get to control how how that's in y'all ears. So ladies and gentlemen, that's going to be playing in our background and we're going to loop to the dupe it. And the only reason why we're going to loop it Wait, I, I don't want to right click. I want to left click. Okay, so Jethro's going to be playing in the background. I got to talk to y'all about something. Now, if y'all y'all hear the... Oh, y'all don't hear the wind in the background. Okay, let's do it right there. That's one win. That's another win. That's that swamp cooler thing. We're, we're in that time where outside right now, it's... 82 degrees going to 90 and it's been kind of warm the last couple of days so I I don't need to be baking in here okay because I, I don't like you know bacon in the mouth okay not even the bits people I don't do bacon I, I, and they didn't got nothing to do with no pulp I, I, beef bacon I don't think, I think beef bacon tastes nasty y'all shouldn't have introduced me to the pulp bacon you shouldn't have the swine. You shouldn't have introduced me to the swine. I'm telling you. All right, ladies and gentlemen, I apologize. Let me go ahead and get this started so that we can get serious. Those of you who've been fighting bankruptcy and foreclosure and individuals trying to take all of your property because it's this way the stupid system has done you and everybody and your grandfather. What we're going to have to do, ladies and gentlemen, is we're going to have to take over. Now, what do I mean by take over? Well, let me show you something about um, the system. We're going to go to Noi. And I was talking to ChatGPT because we're having to appeal some things. Now, I told you guys how ChatGPT has been purposely giving you false and misleading information. On purpose, especially when it comes to legal. And I told you to stop using it. Well, it appears they got the message. And if they do something stupid like that again, I guarantee you I will light them up again on YouTube. See, ChatGPT is competing against every other AI system and they need you guys. Why? They need you coming to them. The problem is they, the attorneys and the judges have gone to them and worked out these little side deals to prevent them from giving you information. The first thing you guys need to know is that the bankruptcy court is not part of the federal district court. Do not let these ignorant mothers tell you that it's part of the federal district court. It has never been part of the federal district court. They're not even tenured judges. Their lifetime sitting on that bench is 4 to 15 years. Whereas federal judges are lifetime tenure. Magistrates, four years in a federal district court. So magistrates in a federal district court are under Article 1. They're legislative judges. They've been mixing legislative and judicial this whole time, and y'all haven't paid attention. So ladies and gentlemen, challenge the practice is unconstitutional. There is nothing in the Constitution saying that a legislative judge can participate in a judicial venue. It's a denial of your right to access the judicial branch of government. Now, I'm going to tell you about this so that y'all understand it. Because most of y'all don't get it. So we're going to go here for a minute. He don't know what he's talking about. ChatGPT 4.0. Okay? That, that's what it is. ChatGPT 4.0. That's what he's talking about. But we ain't going to talk about that. we we got to talk about something else, okay? Get, get, that, get that out of there. I, I want a new window. I want you just to open up. We can go to 
Watch this. A R T. Don't get offended. Ladies and gentlemen, this is my, my favorite song of all the songs that I put together. And Jethro, I like what Jethro does when he sings this song. Pay attention. That's not Article 3. Okay? That's not Article 3. I don't know where that joke came from. Okay? You know what? This is the annotation. We can go to the annotation. I don't make a dime off of any of this, but I don't care. I don't care. I, I know it ain't fair, y'all. What you think? Talking on video. Sorry, ladies and gentlemen. I don't know why it's taking so long to get to a web page. They've been slowing. You know, they've been slowing down Yandex. See, look at that. They've been slowing down Yandex because it's a Russian browser by a Russian company. And so they've been slowing it down. Y'all saw me click on this, and it act like I didn't even do it. Like, ladies and gentlemen, look, that's how fast it's supposed to be, but they did that on purpose. Now, here is Article 3. Pay attention. And what I want y'all to do is I want y'all to pay attention to... Now, I didn't move that. It moved on its own. Okay? You see that right there? I'm looking for... The, well, this is Article 1. Well, no, this is Article 1 of the... Uh, no, Section 1 of Article 3. See, it says Article... Three, section one, overview of Article Three of the Judicial Branch. The judicial power of the United States shall be vested in one Supreme Court. Now hold on, pay attention to that sentence right there. Now, do you guys know what a conjunction is? Hold on, let's uh, do that because some of y'all y'all ain't been to school in a while. Wake up. Sorry, ladies and gentlemen. Let me pause y'all for a second. Ladies and gentlemen, definition of conjunction. It's a word used to connect clauses or sentences or to coordinate words in the same clause, e.g. and but if. The action or an instance of two or more events or things occurring at the same point or time or space. Conjunction, junction, what's your fight? I'm gonna get you there if you very careful. Don't y'all remember? Okay, so the act of joining together, combining, union. So let me show you how the word and is used here. The judicial power, let me get rid of this because I don't need that. The judicial power of the United States shall be vested in one Supreme Court, pay attention, and in such inferior courts as Congress from time to time may ordain and establish. Pay attention, I want y'all to pay attention because this is very important that y'all pay attention to the and in such inferior courts. The judges, both of the Supreme Court and of the inferior courts, shall hold their office during good behavior and shall, at stated times, receive their services, a compensation for their services, a compensation, which shall not be diminished during their continuance in office. Now, pay attention to this so that y'all get it. If the judicial power is vested in the Supreme Court and the inferior court, what makes the Supreme Court superior to the inferior courts? They have the same judicial power. Pay attention. If the judicial power of the United States is vested in the Supreme Court and in such inferior courts as Congress shall from time to time ordain. Okay, pay attention. By the way, I didn't do that. That's the system. That's the game you play. Got voice recognition turned off. 
Okay, that's what the system does. Now, ladies and gentlemen, let's go ahead and explain this again. Let's break it down. If the judicial power is in the Supreme Court, the judicial power of the United States shall be vested in the Supreme Court. Now, here's tying the two together. And in such inferior courts, which means they're not the Supreme Court. Oh, I'm sorry. This one has an AI, too. And I got to find out. I got to remember how to shut it off. Hold on. Nope, that's translation. Hold on, y'all. Nah, I can't turn that one off. That ain't it. All right, let, let's let's just go ahead. So that y'all get it. See, that's not that. That's my what you call it doing that. See, my voice recognition that's turned off right here. Turned off, and it's still on. Let's go ahead and talk about this so that y'all get it. If the Supreme Court has the judicial power and the inferior courts have the same judicial power, so how is the Supreme Court of the United States superior if they have the same power? That means Supreme Power can't order them to do anything, which is why you don't see the Supreme Court ordering the smaller courts to do anything. Just don't take my word for it. They have the same power. They have the same judicial power. It's called the judicial power. Judicial power is not divided up into 8, 20, 100 billion sections. Whoa, what did it take me to? Trial of all crimes except cases of impeachment shall be by jury. And such trial shall be held in a state where said crime may have been committed. Okay, let's see. Oh, so that's where they got the trial in a criminal matter. <laughs> shall be by jury. And it's not guaranteed in civil matters. Well, the Seventh Amendment guarantees it in civil matters. Oops. And here's your jurisdictions of the court. You have federal question jurisdiction. And let's see. Constitutionality is statutory ground challenges jurisdiction. That's what all of this junk is about. I don't really care about it myself. But I'm going to suggest y'all look at it. Why? So that y'all can understand what y'all is. So let's go back and talk to y'all about ChatGPT so that y'all get it. So since it's an Article 1 court created by Congress under Article 1 and not Article 3, it's inferior. But I don't want you challenging the bankruptcy court's jurisdiction on that premise. I want you to understand that you can challenge the debt because the debt being brought before the court is a jurisdictional issue and you can challenge the jurisdiction of the debt let's see if we got any case citations that will talk about challenging the jurisdiction of the debt the second circuit in this case affirmed the principle of challenging jurisdiction including those based on validity of debt can be raised at any time the court held that the debtor's right to contest the debt is intermediately or intrinsically or interocularly linked to the jurisdictional authority of the bankruptcy court to adjudicate the matter. So, ladies and gentlemen, y'all ain't been challenging the debt. I, but I got that debt! Shut up. Ain't nobody asking you all that junk you claim you did. We're documenting what the facts are. So, he's telling the truth. I don't care what you think. I'm just telling you what the facts are. Okay, that's all I'm doing is these are facts. And I'm only talking about facts. I ain't talking about nothing else. Let's continue, shall we? Ladies and gentlemen, the debt is the issue before the court. And the court is claiming it has jurisdiction over it. So you have a right to challenge the validity of the debt. And if you've done that, then you need to highlight. Now, let's make sure you guys have the right to challenge the validity of the debt. Each of these cases I'm going to put in the description of this video. Copy. We're going to go over to perplexity. From now on, you guys got to do your own research. I got so many people calling me. Well, uh, such and such, such and such said, I don't give up what such and such, such and such said. I don't care who, how many videos they done made. It's just because they make a video don't make them law. You better go look up the law and you better go look and listen to the people who know law. 
just because these idiots are on video talking about they know the law, and y'all taking their word for it, something wrong with y'all. Well, they're showing you that. Yeah, but you don't even understand the application of what they're showing you. You have to be able to apply what they're showing. You can't just go back out there spewing. Ooh, my stars, ladies and gentlemen. I don't understand it. I really don't understand it. Hold on. Enter. Now, the cases you cited highlighted the important principle regarding bankruptcy jurisdiction. A debtor can challenge the validity of the debt itself, which may impact the bankruptcy court subjected matter jurisdiction over the case. These points, these key points, these the key points are subject matter jurisdiction of the bankruptcy court can be challenged at any time, even on appeal, as it goes to the court's authority to hear the case. I am challenging that jurisdiction. I'm challenging the debt as a means of challenging the jurisdiction. Don't just uh, non-specifically challenge the court's jurisdiction. Challenge the jurisdiction over the subject matter. Subject matter is debt, people. Challenge the debt. And you have a right to challenge the debt. The courts have emphasized that when a debtor disputes the foundational debt itself, it raises a potential jurisdictional issue that must be carefully examined regarding the proper handling and adjudication of the bankruptcy case. And ladies and gentlemen, you don't have to accept their word for it. Why? Watch this. The courts have held that the FDCPA and its principles apply in bankruptcy cases. TikTok. The courts have indeed held that the Fair Debt Collections Practices Act and its principles apply in bankruptcy. Even though the Fair Debt Collections Practices Act and the Bankruptcy Code are separate federal statutes with different purposes, the key points are there is no inherent conflict between the FDCPA and the Bankruptcy Code. Why? Because the FDC FDCPA deals with debts. The ability to collect the debt is an activity covered by bankruptcy. That's why all debt collection activities must cease. Okay, the FDCPA prohibits deceptive blah, blah, blah. No, we don't care what it prohibits. It gives you the right to challenge the validity of the debt. The courts have held that the filing of a proof of claim on a time-barred debt can potentially violate the FDCPA's prohibition against unfair and unconscionable means of collecting a debt. The debtors can bring claims under both the FDCPA and the Bankruptcy Code, automatic state violations, for the same conduct of a debt collector and the statute provides different remedies. The FDCPA applies to debt collectors while creditors themselves may be exempt even if they engage in similar conduct in bankruptcy cases. No, anyone attempting to collect the debt is deemed a debt collector. Why? Because we're saying the debt's already been paid. That makes them a third party debt collector. And we have the right to bring forth our third party debt collector, debt collector claim. Look, in summary, the Bankruptcy Code has its own rules and procedures. The Federal Practices Act act as an additional layer or an adhesion to the protections against abusive debt collection practices by third party debt collectors. The attorney is not representing the holder in due course. There's no evidence on the record that he represents the holder in due course other than his word. There's no paperwork. There's no uh, document signed by any executive officer. The attorney is in there by himself. There's not a representative of the bank there. So why are we taking his word for it? Because he's an officer of the court? Well, I'm objecting to his officer of the court status. That's not good enough. He's in here testifying. He doesn't have the right to testify, but he's testifying and the court's allowing him to testify. There must be an officer of the bank sitting in the court. An official officer of the bank, because if I want to cross-examine that officer, that officer must be available for cross-examination. Y'all need to understand what's going on. And they're doing this to all of y'all. So look, challenge the debt. Don't 
as your challenge to jurisdiction and documented that once you challenge the debt, if you've done it in the past, that that was a challenge to the jurisdiction and by law it can be raised at any time and it must be proved to exist. Okay, watch this. Jurisdiction can be challenged at any time, comma, and jurisdiction, comma, once challenged must be proved to exist. Comma, the courts have continuously held to this standard. Because the music is playing in the background, I don't want it to interfere with the voice recognition. The cases cited emphasize the subject matter jurisdiction and bankruptcy proceedings can be challenged at any time, and the burden is on the court to establish that it has proper jurisdiction once the challenge is raised. The key points are jurisdiction can be challenged at any stage in the bankruptcy, even if it's on appeal. Okay, ladies and gentlemen, watch this. La ladies and gentlemen, watch this. La la ladies and gentlemen, ladies and gentlemen, ladies and gentlemen, watch this. This is one case, ladies and gentlemen. I'm looking for another case. Give me a second. Y'all only gave me one case? Y'all supposed to give me more case citations. I mean, it's giving me other stuff, other conversations. See, there's the other cases. All right. Case distinguished, uh, blah, 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 blah. Held that unlike those cases, Vicky's counterclaim did not arise from the bankruptcy itself and that it was not necessary to resolve the counterclaim in the claims allowance process. Elsewhere, the courts also noted that Pierce did not truthfully consent to the resolution in Vicky's counterclaim bankruptcy and Pierce had nowhere else to go if he wished to discover his claim. Next, the court dismissed the notion that the bankruptcy courts are adjutants of the district courts because when the court issues a final ruling it is no mere a joke of anyone the court also rejects the practical argument made by vicky and her amicus brief including the united states regarding delays and increased costs of bankruptcy courts are unable to finally resolve compulsory counterclaims in the claims process and unconstitutional law, the court explained, cannot be saved simply because it's convenient or efficient. Okay, ladies and gentlemen, basically what I'm saying is you're going to get a copy of all of this research. I'm going to give you this one. You're going to get this link. I can't give you the whole link because YouTube will take the link, but I will reduce the link and you will have the link, okay? All right. Hey, I got to go. I'm so glad y'all get to know that jurisdiction can be challenged at any time and that the courts have ruled that jurisdiction can be challenged at any time. And you want to challenge the validity of the debt. And remember, you have the right to challenge the validity of the debt at any time. And they can't just say based on copies that it exists. See, that's all they're producing is copies. You want to challenge the copies. You want to say that that junk is altered. I know for a fact the promissory note is altered. That's a copy of the original. We need to see the original so that I can show you that it's been altered. And if it's been altered, then that means that someone's tried to commit fraud upon this court. So by all means, order them to produce the original promissory note. Okay? And if they can't produce the original promissory note, show where they've ever provided proof that they've asked the court for leave or documented that they lost the promissory note. Now, if they lost the promissory note, all we need to do is have somebody sign an affidavit saying that the promissory note has in no way, under any circumstances, been altered since it was signed by me before the closing agent. And I'll accept that. And we'll admit that into the record immediately. That's how you dispute it, ladies and gentlemen. All right, I got to go. Y'all take care because I'm not doing this to be famous. Arrivederci.